Hello everyone and welcome to Metro TV. I'm your host Andy Hoig, CEO and publisher of Metro Magazine. We have a really great show for you today. We have Brooke from Omaha Fashion Week. We'll be talking to the folks from Heartland Family Service and also JDRF. And lastly, American Heart Association um, talking about their gala and Heart Awareness Month. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Well, hello everyone. It is Heart Awareness Month and American Heart Association here, Shannon Hilaire, the Communications Director. So thank you, Shannon, for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having us. So let's talk about, yeah. Absolutely. So February is American Heart Month. We're yeah. kicking it off with National Wear Red Day on Friday, February yeah. 7th. Uh, we're super excited to spread that life-saving awareness. And you can really spread awareness with just a simple clothing choice. That's what's so great about National Wear Red Day. Yeah. Um, what we're spreading awareness about is women's number one health threat, which is cardiovascular disease and stroke. Yeah. Uh, so many people don't realize that that is the number one health threat nationally. Most people think of cancer off the top of their right. heads, um, but it's actually heart disease and stroke. And with 80% of it being preventable, got to get that word out. Yeah, and let's talk about prevention. Mm -hmm. um, so I know your the website has tons of information, but let's just talk a little bit about what, what are those some prevention tips? Absolutely, heart.org is your spot to go through yeah. and check out those those life-saving prevention tips. Um, but the biggest one I can think of is your blood pressure. Getting that blood pressure checked and getting it checked correctly. Uh, CVS Health is really spoiling us this month and doing free health checks okay. throughout the entire month of February for men and women to come in and check your blood pressure, your, your um, your pulse rate, your cholesterol, talking about how much you're moving and yeah. sleeping and how you're eating, and yeah. et cetera, because those are all leading causes. Uh, but usually those are pretty silent things that are that are indicators of heart disease. Yeah, because what are, um, what are some indicators? Like if you're, let's talk about those, because I know a lot of times you don't know. Right. You really don't know. Right, so for a heart attack, especially in females versus males, you hear the general, you know, shooting pains up your left arms, chest pain, elephant on the chest. Yes, those are symptoms, but for women, they're a little bit more silent. It could be, you know, jaw pain, flu-like symptoms, just feeling wiped out and exhausted. And as women, we're so busy taking care yeah. of everybody else that we don't even realize you know, the, we need to be checked yeah. out right away until yeah. it's too late sometimes. Um, like you said, 80% of cardiovascular events could be prevented with lifestyle changes. Absolutely. And that's eating correctly, moving your body. Mm -hmm. e um, eating your more, eating more, less, uh, yeah. taking the stairs instead of the elevator, yeah. tracking those blood pressure numbers, uh, getting even a blood pressure cuff for your home, seeing how it fluctuates for you and learning how to control it. So we're going to talk about the big event oh, yeah. on the 29th of February, but are there anything else during the month that you guys, that people can participate in? Yeah, or? we celebrate Congenital Heart Defect Week that starts on February 7th and grows through the 14th. Uh, so we love to share stories of people that are born with congenital heart defects. It's one out of every 110 babies are born okay. with a congenital heart defect. So most, a lot of people think heart disease, and once again, they think older male yeah. they don't realize that it's it's the little ones too yeah. and what can we do about that yeah. um, and then we do we have our big 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 event coming up which is our annual heart ball the 2020 heart ball is on february 29th this year yeah uh, leap year or leap day so we're asking yep. people what would you do with more time what would you do with one extra day um, and so people will be coming on down to the CHI Health Center. Uh, we'll have a, a fancy silent auction and dinner yeah. and black tie. And we're encouraging people to bring a ball to the ball also. Um, what our, does that mean? So what our, kind of ball? Yeah, bring a sports ball. So our sponsor is Castling and Sequence Health Group. Okay. And they are our Bring a Ball Healthier Generation sponsor. And we realize that intervention to make sure that people are not getting heart disease and stroke should start way earlier than it has. Yeah. So we are collecting sports balls for people, uh, for kiddos, and then we drop them off to different community centers and clubs, okay. et cetera, to keep people moving. Nice, that's new too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, so this is our second year of this, um, of this partnership, it's been going great. I think we've delivered almost 1,500 balls. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, where can people go buy tickets? Absolutely, so heart.org forward slash Omaha Heart Ball. Okay, mm -hmm. and people can buy tickets through? They can buy them till about two weeks out, so about a week and a half okay. left or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
All right. Well, anything else you want to say? Yeah, just wear red throughout February yeah. and, and let this be an opportunity to get back on your New Year's resolution that so many yeah. of us have just kind of forgotten about. Yeah. Well, again, the, the event is it's it's really a grand and glorious event. Mm -hmm. It's it's just beautiful. And the heart the heart princesses or the heart sweethearts. The sweethearts. Yeah, yes. the sweethearts. We have 22 sweethearts that will be presented this year and then we do have a heart prince, okay. 5-year-old Wyatt Bullerts and will be presented okay. that night too. All right, and that's a really special mm -hmm. um, part of the event as well. Yeah, tugs at your heartstrings for sure. Yeah. All right, last Website one more time. Heart.org forward slash Omaha Heartball. Okay, and then it, just any kind of heart information, it's heart.org. Heart.org. Okay. Yep. All right, Shannon, thank you so much for joining me yeah, today. Thank you for having us. And we'll be right back. Well, hello and welcome back. I'm here with Nicole Hirta, um, Heartland Family Service Development Manager, and Susan Peterson, the Carnival of Love Gala Chair. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, we're going to talk about this wonderful event, but first let's talk a little bit about Heartland Family Service and, and what services you do provide to the community. Yeah, so Heartland Family Service has been around since 1875, providing services to family and children that are the most vulnerable in our community. So we provide direct service as well as education and outreach to really um, help strengthen those families and individuals. And you have several, I mean, you have quite a few locations around town, don't you? We do. We have 11 different locations okay. in the eastern Nebraska as well as southwest Iowa area. Um, and what, like, who are the people that you do serve? I mean, it's families, like you said, those yes. that, that are very much in need. And what kind of programs can they come see you about? So we have a variety of different programs. We, um, and we serve ages that range all the way from infants in our Family Works programs to seniors in our Generations um, Community Center. Yeah. Um, and so these services range from child and family services to housing, security, and financial services, as well as um, some of our rehabilitation and uh, drug intervention programs. Yeah. So just a lot of a lot of different ways that you help people in a lot of different situations. Yes. So, so let's talk about the event Carnival mm -hmm. Love. I will say that that won our best event for over 500 this year at the big event that was just a couple weeks ago. Um, but Susan, like, yeah, let's talk about this. This is actually one of my favorite events. It's it's fun. It's a carnival. It's it's tell us all about it. Well, it's um, it is fun. That was our <laughs> main <laughs> goal is to make it fun, but also to raise uh, funds, obviously, in sure. support of our services. Uh, this year, our theme is travel. Um, <clears throat> we it, having a whole airplane, you know onboarding experience to make it feel like you're going on an adventure. There'll be signature cocktails and uh, it's some international type food and um, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun for people. I hope they'll feel like they've actually been on a little yeah. trip, trip mm -hmm. after being having attended. Yeah, so give us the specifics like the where it is, when it is, um, and all that good stuff. Yeah, it's February 29th at the NBC Suites in La Vista. Uh, I think the cocktail hour starts at six o'clock, mm -hmm. am I correct? Mm -hmm. And then dinner is at seven? 7.30. 7 7 mm -hmm. And then in between there's a silent auction. Uh, we have over 200 fabulous mm -hmm. gifts wow. yeah. uh, that people will be able to bid on through the auction app yeah. on their phone. Um, and then we'll have during the after, shortly after the meal the presentation by you yes. want to talk about that yeah so we'll also have a video where two of our clients who have 
received services uh, and had a life-changing experience will share their story of how Heartland Family Service really helped change around their life so they can uh, be stronger and, and uh, more capable. And um, so that will be really heartwarming. And then yeah. individuals will have an opportunity to give directly to the services that we provide individuals mm -hmm. in our community. Okay, and it's kind of nice. It's the 29th. We don't get very many 29ths of February. No, um, no once every four years. So, right. so, so where can people go buy tickets at? They can, uh, yeah, they can get them online at heartlandfamilyservice.org. Okay, mm -hmm. and they can also find you on Facebook. Yes, because mm -hmm. um, you guys have a lot of information on there as well. We do. Yes. Uh -huh. So, anything else we want to say? Well, I, I think another part of the program mm -hmm. that I wanted to. Um, talk about would be the live auction we have. Okay. Seven or eight really fantastic live auction items put, packaged together like tickets to uh, getaway golf mm -hmm. uh, outings, uh, trip to uh, girls getaway to Fort <coughs> Collins, Colorado, um, dinner at uh, Happy Hollow Country Club. I mean yeah. there's just going to be a yeah. lot of fun things to bid on during the live auction. And we actually have a really unique one this year as well. We've had a braces treatment donated okay. for our live auction. Yeah. Yeah. I, you don't see that no. very no. often, <laughs> but uh -uh. that's nice. Yeah. And you're still taking sponsorships, is that correct? So yes. people want to be a sponsor, um, they can contact who? They can contact myself. Uh, so if they want to email events at heartlandfamilyservice.org, okay. they can do that. Okay, mm -hmm. and then tickets, but for sure, buy your tickets. Yes. Um, yes. It's a yes. really fun event. So, yes, absolutely. Um, anything else in the last couple seconds you want to add? Um, I just think it's going to be a really fun evening, and uh, I yeah. hope everybody show, comes out. For yeah, it. yeah. It, yes. It's for a good cause, as it they is. say. Mm -hmm. It is, and, it's, and it is one of my favorite events. So, Great. ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. And we will be right back. Well, hello, I am here with Lynn Griffiths and Wendy Peterson Stott. These are the honorary chair and event chair for the JDRF Promise Gala. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's talk a little bit, we're going to talk about the event, but let's just talk a little bit about what, what type 1 diabetes is. Okay. Uh, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder and it um, affects people's pancreas and the fact that they're no longer able to produce insulin. So their body no longer makes insulin that it needs to survive. Um, type 1 diabetes affects, can affect anyone at any age, children, adults. Um, you can be diagnosed at any age. Okay. And is it, is it a lifelong? I mean, once you have it, do you have it for life or? Yes. It, right now, it is a, a chronic condition that must be managed okay. um, by taking insulin um, for the rest of your lives. Yeah. And then that's where JDRF comes in, um, an organization um, committed to, to these diseases. So let's talk about JDRF. So um, JDRF is uh, the largest global um, research funding for a cure for type 1 yeah. diabetes. Um, and the kind of the mission with the JDRF is that they're trying to find a way, and they are, um, for people like Lynn and I to live daily lives easier. Um, and at the end, of course, finding that final cure so right. that we don't have to continue the way we do now. So you both, you both have type 1. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, and when did you find out? So I was diagnosed at the age of 14. Okay. And so, um, and then my son was diagnosed at 17. Wow. Um, and then one of my grandchildren has two of the, the markers that show we can have some sort of an okay. autoimmune. So um, it's time to yeah. push forward and, and raise funds and find a cure. So. Yeah. Uh, myself, I was diagnosed nine years ago on February 8th. Um, I had a child, our daughter had just turned one. Okay. Um, so it was kind of a shock. Uh, yeah. Didn't know anyone uh, growing up that had type one. Um, it was just really um, a change to our yeah. daily lives. 
Well, and that's where this event comes in to play. Um, what year is this event? 2020. Well, but do you, I mean, do you know, like the year, like, is it the 15th annual, the 20th annual? The 23rd. The 23rd. 23rd. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I knew, I knew it had been around for, for quite a while, but this event, um, the Promise Gala. So is the theme this year, Vision for a Cure? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the event and why did you decide to be event chair, honorary chair? Okay. Right. Okay, go ahead. Um, our company has been involved uh, for many years since uh, I was diagnosed. We, we get a big corporate team together and go out to the walk. Um, we've been involved with JDRF heavily since then and it was just something, um, kind of our turn to, to give back and help lead this effort for the gala and we're yeah. su super excited to be chairing with uh, Wendy and Corky. Um, I got involved um, as far as I was just asked if I would yeah. um, uh, be one of the chairs. So I've been on the JDRF board for about three years, which totally changed my life. You know, yeah. you're 14 and you're diabetic and then my son is yeah. diagnosed and I think I know what I'm doing. And so um, I should have reached out to the JDRF a long time ago. So it's a wonderful family um, that I'm thrilled to be a you know, be associated sure. with. And so they asked, and so um, after a lot of thought and prayer, um, yeah. you know, why not? We've got to, it's, it's Becklin says it's time to give yeah. back, and it's a mm -hmm. fun event, so. So let's talk about the specifics. When mm -hmm. is it, where is it, all that good stuff. Okay. It is um, February 22nd, which okay. is a Saturday evening. It's at the CHI Center in the upper ballroom. Um, the night starts off with um, a cocktail hour and a silent auction, and then it leads into a program with a dinner. Um, a live auction, uh, fun to cure, a few different speeches mm -hmm. that are given, um, and then at the end of the evening, 38 special. Oh my gosh! Is our entertainment? That's fun, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. funny. So much fun. So where can people go to buy tickets? Um, they can go online. Uh, the JDRF.org/Nebraska is the website, and the events are listed. They can find the 2020. JDRF Promise Gala Vision for a Cure and click on that and purchase tickets there or actually make a Fund a Cure donation right there okay. to our event. And how many people do you expect at this event? Because this is a, this is a fairly significant right. large group. The last number that we heard or we were told were kind of right at about 1,100. Okay, wow. So it's, a, it, it's a big event. It is and it's, it's grown. I mean honestly I think because I've been doing the magazine for 30 years so I've, I've been to it many times and it certainly grows and is so significant and important to the community. So it is. So anything else you want to add before? Um, I would just say if you know people are just now hearing about it or oh I meant to register and I didn't, it's never too late. We'll find a seat uh, for anyone. And again, um, it's a fun night. It's educational. Mm -hmm. One of our other goals with the JDRF is just to to make tr the awareness out yeah. there. Some people don't even know that they have symptoms of things that they should be yeah. looking for. So um, it's never too late. Go out and uh, uh, join and get fund, just do anything you can to help our cause. Yeah, and lastly, I'll just add, you also do have a walk like in August, correct? correct. Okay, yeah, I've done that many times, so people can check that out too as that gets closer. So thank okay. you ladies thank so much you. for joining thank me today. Thank you. And we will be right back. Well, welcome back. I am here with the wonderful, fabulous Brooke <laughs> Hudson, um, Omaha Fashion Week co-founder. Is that uh, or well, co -director? producer? Producer. My okay. husband was the founder with right. some other folks. Yeah. So, yep. Um, <laughs> well, let's just talk a little sure. bit about Omaha Fashion Week. Just kind of the history mm -hmm. of it before we get into the Spring Fashion yeah, Week that's absolutely. coming up. Okay. Yeah. So Omaha Fashion Week was founded 13 years ago. Wow. It was my husband and some other folks who um, he's like third generation in the fashion industry. And he moved to Omaha, he's from the UK, and was surprised to meet so many young fashion designers who were producing their own shows and derelict warehouses and all kinds of interesting spaces downtown. And he just had this idea of bringing them all together for a show, and he uh, fronted the cost for producing the show, and that allowed them to focus on oh. what they were good at, which is fashion design. And that was really the beginning of Omaha Fashion Week. And that first show, I think we had 12 designers, 20 models, and 2,000 people. I know, to watch, which is amazing. I think I, re I mean, I remember that because it yeah. used to be 
outside. Yes. Yeah, um, right in front of the Nomad Lounge yeah. on 10th Street. Yeah. And that those were crazy days. Those were crazy <laughs> days. Were, yeah. And it was just spectacular. Mm -hmm. But it's really it's it's evolved into something. I mean, it's like one of the top 5 fashion weeks in the United States. Yes. Yeah. Um so let's talk a little bit about the designers because sure. that's that's a big piece. So how mm -hmm. do you select designers? Yeah, we select designers. Um, it's a, actually quite a, a long process um, where we start out with having them fill out an application online and then we take the best applications and they are invited to do an interview with our selection panel, which is a, a panel of industry experts. Mm -hmm. So they pitch their ideas in front of this panel and the panel scores them and the top scores then get into the shows. And we provide that free to designers. Yeah. So once they're accepted into a, one of our shows, then they go through a six month long mentoring process where we meet with them several times along the way and getting ready for the runway. So it's an ongoing feedback yeah. process for them. Yeah. yeah. So how many designers do you have? We have about 28 in this upcoming season. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know you have the fall fashion mm -hmm. week as well. Yep. Is that a little bigger? Or? It's it's different. So okay, we, it is... we do we do have more designers in okay. our fall season. We usually get thirty five to forty designers. Okay. Um, the spring season is different. We call it our fashion for good season. And so during the majority of the week, we're focused on shows that are reaching out to specific audiences. Mm -hmm. Like we have our cancer survivor show, right. which is very well known. We have a high school student night, which we invite high school kids from all over the state to come and participate in the show and the tickets for high school kids are actually free that night. Yeah. And then we do the UNL fashion show. So the majority of the week in our spring season is focused on those types of audiences. Sure. And then we do our two traditional designer showcases where we really show the designers we've been working with over the last six months. Yeah. We do those on the Friday and yeah. Saturday night of the spring season. Well, when is it? Yeah, so it's February 23rd to the 29th. Okay. Yeah. And you can find out information, um, obviously, online mm -hmm. yep. and the different shows. Yeah. And it's, what's OmahaFashionWeek.com? It's OmahaFashionWeek.com, and we're very active on Instagram and Facebook as well. So yeah. there's a lot of great information out there. We are kicking off the season with our bridal show, which is called right. The Isle. And that one, we're actually featuring several uh, local fashion designers like Hannah Caroline Couture and several others that are doing amazing work. So we're going to be showcasing their work on the runway, but that event is actually a big party for brides. Yeah. So it's going to be really fun. Okay. We've got um, flair bartenders, and I think we're going to have some fire dancers and all kinds of crazy things. So it's really a, not really a bridal expo, but more of, we call, we're calling it the bridal party, which yeah. is kind of a play on words. But it's just a fun thing for brides to do and bring their bridal party with them and yeah. come just party with us. Fun. Yeah. Now you do have a special guest we do, coming yes. as well. I'm so excited about this. Her name is Kate Betts, and okay. she is um, an award-winning fashion journalist and a best-selling author. She wrote a book called My Paris Dream, which is her memoir of her experience coming of age in Paris in the late 1980s in that scene. Mm -hmm. So she's like personal friends with Karl Lagerfeld, right? And um, has had just some was like all these amazing experiences back in in a very interesting time in fashion history. Yeah. So she's coming to Omaha, and I'm actually taking her to a lot of different schools. We're going to South High School, UNL, Metro Community College, wow. and several other schools because I want to get her in front of as many students as possible because her story is so inspiring. But we are doing a couple of events. She'll be at Student Night, which is open to the public. Okay. So that's the Tuesday night of Omaha Fashion Week, and then we're doing a special book signing with her on February 23rd. Okay. And so if somebody wants to get an invitation to that, they can just email us at info at Omaha Fashion Week okay. and we can get them an invite for that. Um, but that's that's going to be really cool yeah. for her to, to be here and share her experiences. Yeah. So. How exciting. Yeah. So let's talk about the after party. I've got two more, two more <laughs> yes. things to touch on, the after party. Okay, so this is great. It's um, We've been doing this for many years now, but this will be on the Saturday night after our final show. Okay. It's at the Empire Room, and we're doing this beach theme, so we've got we're bringing back the uh, blow-up unicorn with all the, the balls, okay. the ball pit. Um, but we're going to be doing a lot of other really fun things to really play up this pool party theme because right. the Fashion Week team always wants to jump in a pool after Fashion Week. Yeah. But we can't ever find a pool that's open at this time of year, so we're going to create our right. own. So it's going to be really fun. So much fun. And yeah. you can get tickets. Yeah, actually, if you just show your Omaha Fashion Week ticket okay. from you know, any time during the week, you can go okay. to that. It's open to the public. Yeah. So. 
And lastly, what's happening the Sunday after Fashion Week, yep. March 3rd? So that is our Shop the Runway Sunday event. Okay. And this is where all of our designers that have been through our six-month program come together. They're going to show everything they had on the runway. It's all for sale. And it's a great opportunity for the members of the public to come in and support our local designers, take a look at their work, and then we'll also have donuts and mimosas and Bloody Marys. Okay. Um, which, again, it's another fun Fashion yeah. Week tradition that the whole team looks forward to because it's just kind of a nice, like, yeah. bonding time with everybody where we're not under so much pressure yeah. at the end of the week and it, it's going to be great we're going to actually do a salon style fashion show during that event okay so we'll have some models there wearing some of the garments that were seen on the runway yeah yeah all right so omahafashionweek.com for all the information about all this yes, absolutely all right brooke thank you so yeah, much for joining you, me today yeah great and we'll be right back Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, our giving guide is out, so you can go to spiritofomaha.com and find out more information about locations or read it online. And find us on Facebook, Metro Magazine, all one word. And enjoy this month. Happy Heart Month. We'll see you next time.